Today we're looking at the 592 page Freedom to Vote Act Congress is currently trying to pass. 592 pages, my scroll bar was barely clinging to existence. Now instead of creating a Ken Burns length documentary including thousands of small things that this act does, well, I decided to make a problem and solution summary for the significant things in this act. Today's episode is looking at Title V, Nonpartisan Redistricting Reform. Riveting stuff. Now enter gerrymandering, an issue that has people split down party lines more than, well, the act of gerrymandering. Now, gerrymandering is the idea of drawing districts with the intent of minimizing the voting impact of certain specific groups. Now, let me put it in lunch table terms for you guys. You're the jock from an 80s comedy who just hates those nerds. Now, let me get into character really quick. Stick all the nerds in one table. Sure, they're gonna dominate that table, but I'm gonna dominate all the other ones. Now, that gerrymandering strategy is called packing. Huh, that's weird. This one district is 95% Democrat, while every other voting district in the state is solidly Republican. And now on the other hand, oh whoa, no, it's group project time. We can't have all the nerds in one group. That's gonna mess up the curve. Let's split up the nerds so that every group has one nerd and there isn't a majority of nerds in any group. Now that gerrymandering strategy is called cracking. Huh, it looks like every voting district in your state is 45% Republican and 55% Democrat. What a strange coincidence that they provide 45% of the votes in your state but aren't winning a single state. Now with packing and cracking you get these weird voting districts that look more like doodles even mom of the year isn't going to put on the fridge. Oh, this? It's a horse? Well, that's nice. If you want to view the gamification of our democracy and dissent, Politico is currently tracking each state's redistricting process as they adjust their districts to represent the new recent census data. They're treating it like a baseball game. Alright, and we're at the bottom of the fifth here and it looks like we have the most strong Biden districts but are gaining the most strong Trump districts. And the big loser competitive districts where stuff is not a foregone conclusion. Now some of you are probably thinking, whoa, 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 hold your horses there, Stephen. Surely there are some rules governing redistricting, right? And yes, there are more than 50 different sets of roles depending on which state or territory you're living in. In some states like Texas, it's open season for whatever a crazy cartographer wants to get up to. Now in other states like California, former Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger implemented a very stringent redistricting process where a bipartisan board has to affirmatively approve districts before they can be implemented. Now for a great example of how all this can get really messy, enter my state of New York. Now there is an alive and well debate in New York as to whether we should be gerrymandering our districts as to squeeze out a few more democratic congressional seats, taking them from either competitive districts or from republican held districts. Democrats control both the state house and the governorship so it's really more of a should we debate as opposed to a could we one. And spoiler alert, it's currently a bit of an unresolved mess. The term unilateral disarmament is getting thrown around quite a bit as my state sees other states gerrymandering and our representatives don't want to throw away some potential democratic congressional seats without other states doing the same thing. And I'm sure these exact same conversations are occurring in state houses across the country. So that's probably going to be a bit of a problem. How do we beat this prisoner's dilemma? Well, the solution identified by this bill is a formal set of federal districting rules to be enforced by the courts. Now, currently, there are really two limits on how states district what the states will allow the legislature to get away with, and the 1965 Voting Rights Act, which says that states can't gerrymander against racial minorities. Under current federal rules, as long as you say, eh, it's a democratic neighborhood rather than, eh, it's a African American neighborhood, you're good to go. That might sound like the least fun fun fact on the market, 
But understanding today's proposed law without context is like looking at a random puzzle piece and saying, yeah, I got the gist of it. Now the federal rules that this bill lays out are a direct response to the 2019 Supreme Court case of Rucho v Common Cause. Now in that case, two maps were in question, a Maryland map that was rigged against Republicans and a North Carolinian map that was rigged against Democrats. Now because it was a literal case of, yeah your vote doesn't really matter here. Plaintiffs were arguing that this severe level of partisan gerrymandering was violating their First Amendment freedom of speech and expression rights. That's really the best law in the books for addressing this right now. We're being silenced. Now the court's response, it's not really our problem. There are two federal election laws that we look out for, no racial gerrymandering and you can't vote multiple times. These district maps are breaking neither of those rules. We can clearly see that they were drawn with partisan gain in mind, but again, not really our problem, no law against it. If you got a problem with that, you can either take it up with your state's legislature or congress. Dozens of other bills have been introduced to limit reliance on political considerations in redistricting, pass one of those and all of a sudden this will be our problem and we will have to address it. Now this is the exact hole that congress is attempting to patch today. Here's where things get a little controversial though. You see, it's easy to point to the tire fire and say, bad, but it's a little harder to come up with an agreement on the remedy. The graveyard of federal districting solutions up to this point really falls under the key question of how much flexibility should be given to states in creating their own voting districts. Some plans completely yoink the ability of redistricting out of the hands of states and instead turn them over to algorithms or commissions. Oh god, the nerds won! Now others account for hints of partisan gerrymandering with trigger mechanisms in place for states who go a little too wild with it. Today's plan is a bit of a hybrid of these ideas. First, states will have the freedom to come up with whatever districts their individual laws will allow. Really go crazy with it. Heck, you could come up with a district that's just a connect the dots line running through all the democratic households in your state. Then the rubber hits the road. This proposal would grant any citizen the authority to sue their state if they feel like their vote is being suppressed by partisan gerrymandering. So okay, now to the most important question of the episode, how do you prove that a state is partisan gerrymandered? Now before I get into explaining the procedure that congress has designed in this case, I want to just put a seed in the back of your head that I think really solidifies how to identify gerrymandering and why it's a problem. You see, in writing these episodes, I've always had a bit of a nagging doubt of a conceptual problem with gerrymandering, because what is fair? If every district is competitive, well, how does that work in a deep red or blue states? Are you drawing these weird districts to get a 50-50 split to make elections more suspenseful? The question comes down to representation, not competition. Fortunately, the evidence demanded by congress in this case is a bit more concrete than, have you seen how ugly these districts are? Come on man, that is sus as all get out. The main assessment is to look at the previous results of statewide elections, like votes for president and senators, and then plug those votes through proposed district maps to see if they would yield wildly different seat distribution results. For example, huh, it looks here like 60% of the statewide votes were republican, but under this proposed map, republicans would have only gotten 30% of the seats. Well, that's weird. Now for those of you who watch my court coverage and know that this stuff generally comes down to the ultra specific wording, we're hoisting the red flags if new districts result in partisan advantage or disadvantage in excess of 7% or one congressional district over the normal vote tallies, whichever is greater. So with that, there's not that much room for the courts to wiggle around and interpret. Now of course, just the fact that districts are leading to a partisan advantage is not checkmate for partisan gerrymandering, just check. Maybe a bunch of people in a neighborhood voted or something wonky happened in the past elections. 
At the end of the day, it's going to be up to a civil court judge. Congress has gave defendants and plaintiffs a buffet of four different types of evidence that they can choose from to build their case for court though. First, you can haul out computers and archive data. Now, If running several previous elections through proposed districts yield congressional seats that are widely disproportionate to the proportion of votes cast statewide, well, you can bet that that's definitely going to come up during trial. And second, beyond just breaking out the basement cardboard boxes and digging through some dusty archival data, you can use new statistics to show that, alright, maybe the past wasn't that weird, but these proposed district maps would have a partisan anomalous impact on future elections. Take for example a bunch of Democrats moving from California to Texas. Well, you could be packing those districts now and it would look fine with the old data but present a potential problem for future elections. Now, third, and this metaphor came from the podcast opening arguments, you could have a sort of Doctor Strange argument. Well, we ran three million different scenarios and found only one where your party wins. If you can show that the proposed maps have a partisan electoral anomaly using other proposed district maps or district maps that you just scratched out on your own for the purpose of comparison, well, you can bring that up in trial as well. Lastly, you can mention the context of how the proposed district maps were voted on. For example, if the New York State Legislature rejected district maps proposed by a bipartisan district commission to create their own map, or if one of the Wisconsin Republican district drafter went on talk radio and admitted to partisan gerrymandering districts, well, yeah man, that's not going to help your case. They can bring that up in court. From those four arguments, it's going to be up to a judge to determine whether the proposed districts have either the effect of partisan gerrymandering or were created with the intent to partisan gerrymander. Both of those going to be a problem. In which case, the maps will be thrown out and the state will have to restart the districting process from scratch. So those are the lines that Congress is currently proposing for the purposes of combating partisan gerrymandering in the electoral process in the United States of America. This is all from the Freedom to Vote Act that's going to come up for debate next week. And because there were so many helpful comments in the last video about which content to choose for this time, I'm going to ask you guys again. First, do you want to learn more about this bill? Let me know affirmatively yes or no in the comments. There's some pretty interesting proposals about campaign finance reform, ensuring election integrity so that if you think the election was stolen it would be a lot easier to audit than hiring a bunch of cyber ninjas to check things out in a cabin at the far corner of nowhere. And of course, you got the controversial stuff, which is just a whole bunch of voter access laws like mandatory vote by mail options in each state, automatic voter registration and same day voter registration, making the election a federal holiday, and much, much more. In the description, there's going to be a link to the entire bill, as well as a link to a laundry list of proposals so that you can read through and comment about it if anything else catches your eye and you want to learn more. Until next time, thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello, YouTube. I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.